Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to discuss the differences in oil-based pencils and wax-based pencils. For my oil-based pencils, I have my Faber-Castell Polychromos. This is my 60 set. And for our wax-based pencils, we are going to talk about the Prismacolor Premieres. This is the 150 set. We are just going to discuss some of the differences and compare these pencils today. We are going to discuss some of the pros and cons of both of these pencils. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to decide which type of pencil is better for you or if you feel like you just need both sets. If you enjoy videos like this, please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you always get notified when I post a video. If you like this video, please do make sure you give it a thumbs up because it really helps my videos to be seen by others. Let's go ahead and get into the comparisons of both of these pencils. This is not necessarily going to be a comparison between an actual Faber-Castell, this brand pencil, and the Polychromos pencil. It is actually going to be a comparison between oil-based pencils and wax-based pencils. And the reason that I chose these is because these are the, the two most popular. Prismacolor is the most popular when it comes to wax-based pencils. And Faber-Castell Polychromos are the most popular when it comes to oil-based pencils. Many people enjoy both and enjoy both for different reasons. Many of us have both sets of pencils. And so we are going to just test out these pencils today and see how they perform and see what the differences are between the two. One of these pencil sets is not necessarily better than the other one, but one may be better for different things dependent upon what it is that you're coloring. Here are the Polychromos pencils, and here are the Prismacolor pencils. In my Prismacolor set, you will see that some of them are missing because this is my replacement set that I pulled out. This is my actual only set of the Polychromos. The primary difference between a wax-based pencil and a oil-based pencil is that the wax-based pencils are made of a wax binder and the oil-based pencils are made up of an oil binder. The binder is what holds the pigment together inside the wood casing and it allows the pigment to just spread nicely across your paper. If you have watched many of my tutorials or joined in, in any of my color longs, you already know that I love Prismacolors for anything that I color. Believe it or not though, the very first set that I did purchase of artist grade pencils were the set, the 60 set of Polychromos. So I did get quite a good amount of experience with these prior to ever purchasing my first set of Prismacolors, which was actually only, I believe, the 36 set. I was actually able to use the 36 set of my Prismacolors for quite a long time, probably three years before I ever purchased my very first 150 set of pencils. Let's talk about some of the differences in these two pencils, the oil-based pencils versus a wax-based pencil. The most significant difference between both of these pencils is that the Polychromos are going to be a much harder pencil, whereas the Prismacolors are going to be softer. The Polychromos and the Prismacolors will both sharpen to a beautiful sharp lead. As you can see, I have two colors that are pretty similar, and I pulled them one from each box, a Polychromos pencil and a Prismacolor, so that I could have both pencils having never been sharpened before and both of a similar color so that we could do some of the tests that I plan on doing with you in this video. So the first test that we're gonna do is sharpen these so that we could see how they perform in the pencil sharpener. Of course, I'm gonna use the same pencil sharpener to sharpen both pencils. And this is my Doll 133. It is my absolute favorite pencil sharpener. The way that we use it is we just pull it out like that. I am right-handed, so I need to turn it around. <laughs> but this is my Polychromos. 
and we are going to push this in, this button on the side. We are just going to turn the lever until hopefully it just stops for us, which it did. So that is your sign where you can just push this button back in, push this in, and pull your pencil out. This is the beautiful lead that it created on the Polychromos, which is our oil-based pencil. Now let's go ahead and do the same for our Prismacolor. And remember, these are both newly sharpened pencils. They've never been used before. That was our sign to pull it out. And so here is our Prismacolor. So here's the comparison. This is our Polychromos and this is our Prismacolor. And it did a wonderful job with both of these pencils. Whether they are oil-based or wax-based, this pencil sharpener is amazing. So it really does do a great job no matter what pencil you are sharpening with it. You will notice when we start our demonstrations, I have my piece of Spring Hill, Hill paper here. This is the paper that I always use anytime I do any type of colored pencil demonstrations or if I'm printing out a coloring page to color on PDFs. I absolutely love this paper and it works wonderfully with Prismacolors. We're going to find out exactly how it works as well today in this video with our Polychromos or with probably any oil-based pencil. The other thing that you will notice about an oil-based versus a wax-based pencil is that the lead on the polychromos is going to be much harder whereas your Prismacolor is going to be much softer. So when you're coloring with these or if you're somebody that has a heavy hand you are probably going to enjoy using something that is oil-based much more so than using a Prismacolor. When you're using a Prismacolor, you really have to be very gentle. Otherwise, you will have an issue with the lead breaking on you. And yes, that has happened to me a few times, but I still love my Prismacolors. Another thing I've seen a lot of people talk about with the Prismacolors is that they create a lot of wax bloom and some people don't like that. Some people don't mind me. I don't mind at all. I never even really notice it. And wax bloom is the shiny white film that you will see over your layers once you lay them down on the, on the paper. I am also going to demonstrate that for you today and I will show you what it looks like on camera. The other thing I've noticed with the wax-based Prismacolors is that when you are coloring, you will tend to get a lot of shedding from the pencil, but that is not really a concern because you can just easily remedy that by getting a soft brush and just kind of brushing it off of your coloring page. Our wax-based pencils, like the Prismacolor, also seem to be much more popular. And I think that the main reason for that is that you can acquire the Prismacolors for a much cheaper price tag. The oil-based pencils are generally more expensive. Although the Polychromos do have a higher price tag, that higher price tag comes with a higher light fast rating. The light fast rating on the Prismacolors is not that great. All of the information to be found on the light fastness of the Prismacolors is actually on their website. The Polychromos, almost the whole entire set, does have a really high light fast rating. So really that is what you are paying for. The Fabric Castell actually list their light fast ratings on the back of their tin. If you look at these, hopefully you can see this. I don't know if I'm close enough, but these little stars here next to each one of the colors, that is how you tell what the light fast rating is. And the three stars actually means that it is very light fast as it says here. So if you look through all of these, you can pretty much tell that most all of them in this 60 set actually have three stars. There are a couple here and here and here that actually have two stars and I think one over here but even the two stars means that it is light fast. The three stars means that it is very light fast but 
It looks to me as though most of them are definitely light fast in the whole entire set, and that cannot be said of the Prismacolors. So if that is important to you, then maybe the Faber-Castell Polychromos is the pencil for you. It really generally doesn't make a big difference unless you're an artist who is actually selling your coloring pages. I just wanted to show you these since we're talking about light fastness because these are the Caran d'Ache Luminance Pencils and these have the highest light, light fastness rating on the market. They are very expensive. This is what they look like and they are beautiful pencils. I believe they are definitely wax based. They go down very much so. The closest I've found to Prismacolors and they're wonderful pencils. If you're interested in a review on these, you can find that on my channel and I'll make sure I put that in the upper right hand corner so that you can watch that video as well. Since we're doing a complete comparison of the differences in these pencils, I think it's important to go ahead and discuss the cost. You can get a whole set of Prismacolors. I've seen, for the 150 set, I've seen as low as, even recently, $79. And that is a phenomenal price. That is probably the cheapest I've seen in the last six months. I remember last year around Black Friday, not this last Black Friday, but the previous one, they dropped so low, I think, to around $65. And I did purchase my 150 set for the first time back then. As far as the Polychromos, you get 120 in the biggest set, and the lowest I've seen those is for around $179, $178. I don't think I've seen them ever come below about $164. If you find them for $164, that is a really good deal. If you're looking for more colors and you want your color selection to be much broader, then you may be more interested in the Prismacolors rather than the Polychromos. Also be aware that both the Prismacolor and the Polychromos are both available open stock. And the best place to get those is probably Blick Art Supply. I'll make sure I have a link down below in the description bar below if you're interested in that. Everything that you see me discussing in this video will all be in the description box below. I have my spring heel paper here and it is time to get into some of the different tests I wanted to do to be able to compare the oil-based pencil compared to the wax-based pencil. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to test the vibrancy of each one of these pencils and that is why I chose colors that are very similar to one another. For the Polychromos I have the Cobalt Green. And for the Prismacolor, I've got the Aquamarine. As you can see, these colors are very close to one another. So let's go ahead and test the vibrancy of both of these. I am going to use my Prismacolor first, which is our wax-based pencil. And like I told you all earlier, you shouldn't ever have to press that hard with your Prismacolor because if you do, you will have breakage issues. And that is something you're not going to find with the Polychromos. I have very seldom had my Polychromos break on me just because the lead is so much harder. Let's go ahead and do a second layer. Okay, so there is our vibrancy test, and I'll pull this a little bit closer to the camera. You can see by looking at these that they both are pretty vibrant. The only difference is that the Prismacolor color is just naturally darker than the Polychromos color, but they do have a lot of vibrancy in the colors. I went and reached for two more colors that are sort of similar. From the Prismacolor, I have Raspberry, and from the Polychromo set, I have Dark Red. And we're going to do a little bit more of this vibrancy test. So we've got the Prismacolors on this side, so we're going to keep the Prismacolors over here. 
And then we're going to come over here and we're going to lay down some of this red from the Polychromos. And then again, let's do another layer of both of these. These colors are so similar. If you look at both of these, you can tell that they both really stand out. Let's go ahead and put on here that this is the Prismacolor side. And these are the polys. So for the vibrancy test, I would say they both check off and they both performed pretty much the same. For our next test, we are going to layer these pencils and we're going to see how they perform. Let's go ahead and put one layer of the, or of the uh, Prismacolors. Now we have a second layer of the Prismacolors. And then when you're layering and you come back and you go the opposite direction, that is what helps you to get rid of some of the white in the paper. But we all know that the Prismacolors, you've guys, you guys have all seen me use the Prismacolors on my channel for a lot of videos. So we all know that those layer really well. Now let's test the Polychromos. And as I'm laying this, I could just feel, when you're laying the Prismacolors, you could tell how buttery and creamy soft they are. And you could really tell the difference when you've got, when you've just done it with one, and now you're going over and you're laying the other one and you're doing them one right after the other. This one feels much harder but it also does layer just as well as the Prismacolor. I do feel like though that with the Prismacolor, I feel like this has already used most of the tooth of the paper and this paper has quite a bit of tooth. I feel like the Prismacolor, I could sit here and get a few more layers than I would have been able to with the Polychromos because it looks like already with the polychromos that a lot of the white of the paper is already gone. And with the Prismacolor, I still can see some of the white of the paper and I could put a few more layers down. So as far as layering, it looks like you can get more layers down using the Prismacolors than you can the Polychromos. Let's go ahead and check the other color that we're using and try the same thing with our reds. This time let's go ahead and count the layers as we're putting them down. So here is layer one with my Prismacolor. Now let's go this direction again with layer two. Back up to the top for layer three. Now I'm gonna come back this direction with layer four to see if I get rid of all that white of the paper yet. And we still have a lot of it. So let's try, we still have a lot of the white of the paper I could still see in certain areas here. Now that was four layers. Let's try the same thing with the Polychromos. That was one. Let's go back to the top and we will try two. And I am using the same pressure with both of these pencils. Come back down and do three. And then we're gonna go back this way and do four. And if you look, or I could feel it actually with the pencil, the Polychromos is pretty much almost has covered all of the white of the paper. There is a little bit more here. Let's see. Five. And then let's come back this way with six. Look how beautiful they layer though. You literally cannot see any more of the white of that paper at six layers. Let's come back with the Prismacolors and do the same thing. Let's go this direction first. So this is five and then back down this way would be six and I still see the white of the paper. So let's come back down again and do seven and eight. 
So it took eight layers here and six layers here. And again, these are the Prismacolor and these are the polys. So that is the difference as far as the layering goes. Let's go ahead and move on to details. Now the main objective of this test is to show you that each one of these pencils, one is not better than the other one, it's just that dependent upon whatever you're coloring, you may choose or prefer to choose one over the other. I have both of my teal type colors, my polychromos and my prismacolor, and I sharpened both of the leads to very sharp leads because when you're doing details, this would be if you were doing the fine details in hair where you would flick and just put those very thin lines into the hair to make it look more realistic, or if you were to do fur of an animal, or maybe put the detail in to be able to draw some grass, or put the detail in trees, and things of that sort. So let's go ahead and try the polychromos. And I'm gonna start just by making some lines. And you could see with the polychromos, it is keeping that line. And it is staying pretty thin throughout every single one of these lines. So you can see that this one would be much better if you were trying to color some grass or put in fine details. Let's get, let me show you when I do the same test with the Prisma colors. Do you all see what I see? Let me keep going with this one just to show you. I'm using the same pressure from the beginning all the way to the end. Now if you look at this, you can see that we started out with a very nice line like we got with the polychromos, but this was just the very first line that I drew. And as I, and see, I just got a little bit of breakage there. But as I come through and I keep doing it, you could see that my line is getting wider and wider. And if I come back with the polychromos and I keep going, I still have a fairly thin line. And when you are adding details, it's really great to kind of turn your pencil so if you were, this is just a little tip if you were to do this and you wanted to use your, your uh, Prismacolors, if I went to the other side of my lead and started again, I would start each time as I go around the lead and keep turning with a thinner line. But if I kept doing that over time, it's going to continue on each side of the lead to just get fatter and fatter and the pigment would be spread, up, spread apart even more so. So when we're talking about details like for animals and coloring fur and doing trees and things of that sort like I mentioned earlier, the polychromos definitely wins that one. Now we're going to talk about the white pencil in each one of these sets. I grabbed my white pencil from each set. I've got my polychromos white and my Prismacolor white. And what I'm gonna do to show you this is I'm just going to use my um, colored pencil and then I'm gonna show you what happens when I color over the top of it with white. So if I come in here with my polychromos, which is my cobalt green, And I just add a couple layers here.
And then I'm going to come in with my aquamarine from my poly or from my Prismacolors. And I'm going to add a couple layers there. Now on the Prismacolor side, let me go ahead and label this so you guys know exactly which one is which. So this is Prisma and this is Poly. So if I came in with my white Prismacolor and I colored over this color, you can clearly see the white. And this is actually burnishing the colors together. But you can see the white pencil over that other color. Now, if I come in with the polychromos white and I do the same thing over here you could probably tell that this polychromos white is much more translucent whereas this one is more opaque can you see that and I'm going over I believe with more layers of the polychromos and you can see it but if I continued with the Prismacolor one, just as I did with the Polychromos, you can see that it gets whiter and whiter. Now, what we were talking about earlier, we were talking about Wax Bloom. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of blending boxes here so that we could see how the pencils blend together. And then I'm going to try to show you exactly what the wax bloom is. Actually, right here on the Prismacolor, if I hold it close enough to the camera, I don't know if you can see that, but you could probably see the wax bloom, which is the reflective, how it's got like that white film over the color. And if you look at the Polychromos, the Polychromos does not have that. What I also noticed is if you see up here where I colored with the Prismacolor, all around the Prismacolor, you will see some shedding here. And also on the red where I did the layers for the red, you could see a lot of the shedding on my paper. You do not get that with the Polychromos. And down here, if you look at the white, you will not see any wax bloom where the polychromos were layered and then had the white put on top. Let's go ahead and try a little bit of blending. We are going to go ahead and do a little bit of blending. I picked two similar colors. They're all purples. And I really don't have anything identical in either set. So I picked these three colors for my polychromos. I have Delft Blue, I believe that says. And then Purple Violet. And then this one is Light Ultramarine. For my Prisma colors, I have the lavender, the Parma violet, and it looks like the Indithrone blue. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but those are the colors I have. I have this side here for Polly, so we're going to go ahead and test those out first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am just going to lay my lightest color down. Then I'm going to come over with my next color and I'm going to lay that down. And then my darkest of colors, I'm going to come and lay right over the top of all of those. And this is not just blending, but this is also layering the colors on top of one another and they're doing a beautiful job. Now come back with my middle color. And I can tell that these do, between the layering test and this blending test, I can tell that they do require less layers to cover all of the white or burnish out. 
on this paper. Again, this is the Spring Hill paper that I use all of the time and these are working wonderfully on this paper. So let's come back with another layer of our darkest color. And then our mid-tone. And then again with our lightest color. That is an absolute beautiful blend right there. It really came together nicely. Let's go ahead and do the same thing now with the Prisma color. And I'm going to lay them down exactly the same way just for the sake of the video and it being a comparison video. So let's go ahead and lay this color. Now when I'm laying these down, I can feel the difference in the hardness of the polychromos compared to the buttery, buttery creaminess, creaminess of the uh, Prisma colors. And as you can see again, you could see all the little flakes that came off of the wax tips of the wax based pencils or the Prisma colors. And you don't get a whole lot of that with the polys. Now I'm going to come back over with my mid-tone. And then I'm going to come back over with my darkest tone. And now just like we did previously, I'm going to come back over and blend that through. And then I'm going to come back with my lightest color. You can see that they both blend together beautifully. And you can also see what I've noticed in all of these tests. Like I said, you're going to get a lot less of the flakes from your pigment when you're using polys than you are with the Prisma color. Over here, you could see a lot of the pigment just kind of laying around on the paper, but that is not a big deal because you could just get a soft brush and you could just take it off or you could just, what I do, just I just blow it off is usually what I do. As you can see with all of the tests that we did, these pencils, no matter which type you choose, they both have their place and they're both wonderful pencils. They both layer beautifully. They blend together beautifully. There was quite a bit of difference in the whites and how the whites laid down, but that is not a big deal because if you're using the polys, you can always combine these pencils together. If you wanted to take your Prismacolor white and you wanted to burnish your polys together and use the Prismacolor white to do that, you could do so. These pencils do work well together if you wanted to use both of them on the same drawing or coloring page or whatever it is you're doing. They both layered beautifully. I noticed that the polys did take less layers than the Prisma colors did. And the vibrancy, if you look up here at the top, they are both extremely vibrant. And then if you remember our detail test that we did here, I would say that your Prisma colors are better for areas where you want your pencils to blend together really beautifully, like if you were coloring something like skin. If you were coloring the hair of a portrait, you may want to combine both of your pencils and do all of the parts where you wanted to blend all of the highlights in the hair together with the shadows with your Prisma colors. And then you could always come back with your Polychromo set and draw in all the fine details of the hair to make the hair look much more natural. So they both have their place. They're both wonderful pencils. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure you subscribe and you turn your bell notifications on. If you liked this video, please do make sure you give it a like. And I hope to see you in the next one. Happy coloring. Bye.